Hey, Ikris here. Wanted to talk to you about a build I was just working on the last couple days. Was feeling in the mood for a little bit more Path of Exile. Um, if you've been following me for any reasonable amount of time, you know that I'm somewhat obsessed with making mechanical bees work. And by mechanical bees, I mean minion instability animated weapon, because the base life of animated weapon is much higher than summon raging spirit. And the big barrier to getting that to work is that it needs to be 100% automated. The lingering blades needs to be automated. The casting needs to be automated. Otherwise, it just feels too clunky. Um, you don't have like Arendelle's Embrace or the Tuvakai Amulet to increase how much damage taking they are per second. So that combined with actually having to cast the thing, it's just it's too slow unless you animate every aspect. But we're able to do that here. And I think this actually worked out pretty well. So I'm going to show you this. I got some gameplay footage I'll show after I'm done talking. Um, the graphics on it are terrible. I'm working on that. I'm not really sure why, because it doesn't look this bad on my computer when I film it. Like, my computer's a bit old, but it's not that old. Um, so I don't know. I think OBS just has bad quality with Path of Exile for some reason. So if you have any knowledge about that, get at me in the comments, and I'll try and get some higher quality footage going forward. But... Anyway, so the, the deal with this weapon is it gives 25% chance to trigger level 20 animated weapon on kill, and weapons you animate create an additional copy. And if you've been paying attention to my flask, you already know what's going to happen. We have writhing jars. Anytime we drink them, two enemy writhing worms escape the flask when used, which can qualify for an on-kill effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cyclone with blade fall, cast while channeling, spell cascade to make it cover more of an area and give us more places to get the, um, the blades from. And I have enough flask recovery, which I'll show you in a bit, that I can drink these over once per second, really only about once per second in hideout. And I'll show you how that works. So I just need to get my fingers just right because I am not on my good mouse and I need to hit all these flasks at once. And here we go. Okay, so you'll see that as I'm doing this, these animated weapons are spawning and then they're dying because I have Infernal Legion on them and I can move around while I do it. And so it's pretty smooth and I'll show you some gameplay footage. Uh, let's get into the path of building for it because it's pretty reasonable. So every one of these animated weapons does a little bit over 400,000 damage um, and we're getting about five a second. Um, so we're killing 10 worms a second, that's from drinking all of our flasks. We have a 25% chance to spawn one on kill, but every time we spawn one we get an additional copy due to the mace. So that averages out to 5 per second. Um, you can min-max this, you know, a lot further than I have, get more flask up time or whatever, get like the traitor or something maybe. Actually I'm not sure if the traitor would help. Uh, get like the mother's embrace belt so that your minions themselves are proccing the flasks and then that has reduced charges. So there's ways that you could get this probably to as many as 10 per second. Um, but you can't go much further than that because you can't kill the animated weapons fast enough. So it takes them a couple seconds to die. So if you get up to spawning 10 per second, um, you'll start replacing the blades instead of them exploding. So that's one limiting factor if you're really going to take this build and run with it. Um, but there's some cool things about this build. So because we're killing all the times, this overcharged wheel maxes all of our charges, power, frenzy, and endurance all the time. Um, because we're drinking flasks all the time, we don't really need to worry about elemental ailments. You know, and if we take another flask mastery, it could be non-elemental ailments. Then then you wouldn't have to worry about anything. We're drinking you know five a second. Um, what else do I want to talk about? We're using Mind Over Matter for defense. There's not too many auras that like really boost um, this build. Skitterbots would increase the damage by a healthy chunk. Um, although actually, do I have this turned on? I don't have this turned on. There we go. A little bit more damage. Um, we have this because we can, you know, we can get the corpses. And in that case. Um, Oh, no, I don't know. I was thinking I have that. I don't have that. Never mind. I can't turn that on. Sorry. Okay. Whatever. It didn't make that much of a difference anyway. Um, so because we have this, we can take like an additional endurance charge. That along with the Chaos Golem and the 
Bone Barrier gives us pretty reasonable physical damage reduction. I'll show you the stats, as always, it's with 10,000. I'll go over this in a second. Um, so you see we have 15 and change on physical, around 34 in elemental, even though we don't have any plus to maximum resistance. Um, we're doing that with Mind and Matter. This is on a Calm's Heart, so keep that in mind. This is not something I'm calling like a Soul Sathon friendly thing. Your House Black Seal is not common at all. Plus five unique flasks. These are somewhat achievable, I think, because it's the only target on a hollowed uh, hybrid flask if you were going to chance it. I actually don't know, though. I've never tried it, so don't quote me on that. But it is the only target, so theoretically it shouldn't be that bad. Um... So, we need to talk about flask charge up time. Um, now, the cool thing about a hybrid flask is that a mana or a life flask will apply to it. So, if it's something that says life charges gain one flask every three seconds, that will apply to hybrid. And the same deal with mana. So, this wheel is really useful for us. This is like the backbone of our flask generation. We also, of course, will take these here, this here, and here extra flask charges and then uh, the flask mastery of that. Uh, the other thing that we're doing for flasks is we're using the survival skills jewel. So the writhing worms themselves aren't allowed to generate flask charges. It doesn't say that anywhere on the item. It's just how they work. You can test it yourself and see that the worms won't give you flasks for killing them. But this is a way around that. Uh, you get two flash charges and you get this from just one of the um, the, the quest the um the the campaign quest it's not a difficult amulet to get don't recall which one it is i think it's oh yeah i do it's the um, it's the golden hand one so the one that you always skip <laughs> if you're me but just do the golden hand one this one time it's the one i think it's called the crypt where it's at um and they'll give you a, a choice between three survival gems and this is the one that i take um, so you get two charges. It's limited to once per second, but that still helps. It's still scaled by our increased flask charges gained. And then we anoint field medicine for another life charge. So we get three every time we hit something, not more than once per second. And you can see from all the modifiers we have on here, if you look on Path of Building, under Effective Flask Stats, you see that our charge gain modifier is plus 110%, so more than double any flasks we would otherwise be getting. So we're getting those seven per second that it shows charges generated, and in addition, we're getting six and change from that for a total of 13, um, which wouldn't be enough to do it every second because it consumes 16 to 17, depending on the roll, uh, charges on use. But in a combat scenario, you're also either damaging a unique enemy, which gives you charges, or you're killing things, which... We don't get maximum charges from, we only get 20%, but it's still more than enough to keep it going in any sort of mapping scenario. Um, my original build for this went further and took this careful conversation, cons I can speak, conservationist wheel, um, and that gives you reduced flask charges used and a bit more flask charges gained. Um, so if you're finding that you don't make it, just path a little bit further, uh, one, two, three, four, five more nodes. Take these. Um, and I think this is fine. Um, like I said, that was my original plan, but I wasn't having any issues sustaining um, with just this, so I decided to shore up the defenses a little bit before I went to take this, and that's where the character's at at the moment. Um, anything else I need to talk about? Um, the regen is obviously amazing. Every one of these flasks, and we're drinking all five of them, has an effective stat of... Over 1,100 life, 250 mana, we're drinking five of them, so you can pretty much out-regen any sort of degen that you would encounter. Um, I don't know if I talked about this yet or not, but remove a random elemental element anytime you use a flask. If you wanted to go on here, you could go for remove a random non-elemental element anytime you use a life flask, and hybrid applies to both. Um, so it, there's some there's some cool things about it. Um, I think I'm gonna cut to the footage now. I don't think I have anything else I need to talk about. Um, yeah, so that's me. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the stuff. I realize the video quality is quite poor. I'm not quite sure what I need to do to fix that. OBS is like it doesn't look this bad on my computer when I film it. Like my rig's old, but it's not that old. Um, so I need to figure that out. I did get sound on the last one, which is new for me. So. Hooray, you'll at least be able to enjoy that, hopefully. Um, but you can see the build in action. Let me know what you think. This sort of chassis 
with the writhing worms. There's some other applications for it. So I'm going to do at least one more video on it, I think, assuming this character doesn't die or anything. This is still, you know me, this is still self self found hardcore. Um, and a couple other applications that I'm curious about are some just a traditional summon raging spirit where we do um, cast on melee kill to summon them with the worms. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that will be annoying with the with the summon raging spirits, you know, going after the worms faster than I can get them. I'll, I'll be curious to test it out and see how it works. Um, I'm not sure if I would use Cyclone there, or I might actually use Flicker Strike, because I could just put on um, Blood Rage and combine with Overcharge that should be enough sustain that I can just warp between the worms. But the issue is then, like, if I get stuck on a rare enemy or something, then Flicker Strike might not work. Um, Another application is Discharge. Um, most spells aren't going to work with this because <coughs> you'll be casting the spell and the spell itself is going to end up killing the worms and then it's like, well, why are we doing this in the first place? Because um, it's not really helping us out that much. Because um, you need it to be like cast on melee kill for there to be like an actual reason that you want to do this. You want something automated and you need it something that makes a lot of sense. Um as far as why you would want to cast it so many times, which is why I mentioned Summon Raging Spirit, because that's sort of a pain to sit still and cast. But Discharge is a potential application. So if we had just two or three Writhing Worm Flasks with Chieftain, what we could do is we could have Cyclone, Endurance Charge on Melee Stun, which any time you hit any of these worms, it's going to stun them because they have no life. I have tested this, by the way, to make sure, because sometimes Writhing Worms are weird. Um, and in that way, you could fuel a Discharge on Chieftain, which could be quite good, actually. Um, I was a little disappointed when I just, because I looked at this for a second, and the numbers weren't amazing because they hurt the ignite damage, and for a lot of skills they then gave us some more damage back, but on discharge they really didn't. So I felt like the numbers were underwhelming, like I might still just go with Wave of Conviction over it, which in that case is the payoff for discharge really there. I'm not sure, but... Um, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at a version with Slayer as well because it's easy enough to get... Um, frenzy charges on kill because we could get because Slayer has that node I'll show you in path if you're unfamiliar what's it called masterful form where your endurance charges is equal to your frenzy charges and I could get it so that you're getting an endurance charge and a frenzy charge every time you kill a worm so that could be an interesting discharge build um, I'll take a look I have a feeling it won't have enough defense because Slayer doesn't usually um, for me to be happy with it but it is an interesting application so those are two things I want to take a look at coming up uh, but yeah, sorry, enough delaying. On with the footage. I will catch you guys in the comments. Ike was out. So I've been farming these soft breach stones for a while. Um, somehow I don't have a copy of the Red Dream, which is strange because I could have sworn I had one. I uh, must have ripped it or something, but anyway, the reason that I'm farming it is that if I do the discharge version of this with the worms, um, if you put the Red Dream in the right place on the tree, it gives you like 34% chance to get an Endurance Charge on kill. It also gives you some pretty good block chance, if I recall correctly, so I tried to farm that, somehow haven't gotten one. Uh, it's really set up my Atlas for Breach. It's actually set up for Metamorph at the moment, which is... Um, Annoying. <laughs> I don't enjoy Metamorph, but the reason I have it set up for Metamorph is I'm trying to get the Mother's Embrace spell. I don't have a copy of that, and that would be... I mean, that's like the traditional thing to use with uh, driving worm guards, because you uh, can make your minions. You can even loop it in some cases. But I guess that's what I'm doing right now. I forgot to mention in the first video, but I'm using increased area of effect, and that's just to make sure that you get a everything in the pack can happen. If you're about to boss, I would switch it out. But you'll see in my fight here, I just have increased air effect on. Uh, I don't remember to use signal prey from the fight support because I never do. He's off sort of hides in a corner, and for a second he's not getting hit by my sword, so I had really an issue with him. I'm not sure if he'll be aware of that, but we do get him reasonably smoothly in the end. 